Hello, I'm Frank Williams, and today we are conducting our first interview from the Life Provision Studio. And we're really lucky because we have Doctor of Holistic Medicine and Clinical Hypnotherapist Victor San. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Um, in brief, short definition, what is hypnosis? In brief and in short definition, the hypnosis is a patient's condition when patient is open for suggestions. Hmm. Another word, by doing a progressive induction, we are trying to relax our patient and put him in what we call hypnotic trance. And being in this hypnotic trance, patient becomes open for suggestion. And at that moment, we can put the right program, the right instruction in his mind. Hmm. So, in terms of the practice, what are some of the procedures that you take to, you know, hypnotize somebody? Um, every hypnotic procedure consists of four major steps. Number one, it's induction when we are trying to relax our patient. Close your eyes, make a deep breath, relax, try to uh, point your attention to your head, make sure your face is completely relaxed. Now go down to your shoulders, to your hands, and so, so, so. That's the first step. The second step is when we are checking the level of relaxation. It's very important because we need to know, should we continue to relax our patient or he, she is ready. So we perform the relaxation test, depth test. And depending on result, we usually do what we call deepening, which means put this patient even deeper in hypnotic state. Mm. And after deepening, the shortest part of the procedure is a script which contains our instructions depending on which goal we are trying to reach. So if we're trying to help this patient to quit from smoking, it will be instructions about smoking. If we're trying to reach the goal to lose weight, it will be instructions about how to eat, how much to eat, what kind of food to use, and so, so, so. If this is a patient with depression, we will try to give him, her, a set of instructions of how to control his, her mind, how to react, to the general condition around stay positive, stay positive, uh, uh, get uh, proper reactions, okay. not to be confused and so. Okay, and um, I hear that you know hypnosis works for some people but not for others. That's not true. That's not true. Uh, from hypnosis point of view, all people could be divided in two major categories, analytical and non-analytical. Non-analytical people, it's more people with a kind of, uh, people who are open for, for suggestions without hypnosis, mm -hmm. people who trust, people who are ready to communicate. And the other category is analytical people. It's very easy to understand these two categories. Imagine uh, a soldier who is always follow instructions and orders from his, uh, from captains, uh, lieutenants, uh, generals, and so, okay? He is non-analytical, 90% of the time, because he's already 
has a habit to follow instructions. Is that regimented thinking? Yes. The opposite is general, who has a habit to give instructions and don't want to accept. Do those types of people tend to be, you know, close-minded? And yes, you can say so. Okay. So, in order for hypnosis to work, you have to be open-minded. Uh, no, uh, the non-analytical peoples, people like soldiers, they are very easy to be hypnotized. Easy. It's a matter of seconds sometimes. The analytical people. Everything we have to do, just use a different technique. And they are also hypnotizable. So it's not true that some people cannot be hypnotized. They can be. Um, when we are performing our hypnotic session, we are trying, our goal is to talk to patients subconscious, not conscious, but subconscious. And for non-analytical people, this subconscious is always open. Very good example. Imagine in that room, there is a subconscious. And I need to go to that room in order to give a good instructions. But on a door, there is an English guard with an automatic weapon. So, if this is non-analytical person, this English guard is not really very uh, strong. He can spend a couple minutes to smoke cigarettes, he can uh, get out from the door and do something, maybe make a phone call. In analytical people, this guy will never let you go in. He is standing at the doors and he knows what his task is. But the good thing is that if we can find some kind of work for this English guard, make him interested in this work. He will start doing this work and he will forget about the door. Hmm. And at that moment, we can go in. And in a hypnosis station, uh, session, it's very easy. All I have to do, I have to give to the patient some kind of task. For example, uh, imagine that you are asked to write a book about um, boys and girls names. So what I want to ask you, when I tell you to start, you have to think about boys and girls name on each letter of the alphabet. For example, A, Alice, A, Avram, B, Boris, B, Bella, whatever. All you have to do from A to Z, find these names. When I give this instruction to the patient, his guard, his English guard, starting to write this book, and he opens the door. So at that moment, I can go in so it's almost and work like with... Subconscious. It's, it's almost like a diversion. Exactly. So you create the diversion in order to create the opportunity for entrance into the subconscious. Exactly. Yeah. It's really interesting.